Welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. This episode is all about Andrual, considered by the Dalish to be the goddess of the hunt, while Solas claims she was more accurately the goddess of sacrifice. Andrual is believed to be the sister of Solas. Some tales suggest they were both the daughters of Mithal and Elganon, but that remains open for debate. Let's take a look at some of Andrual's deeds. The biggest one I want to start out with is this codex entry from the Temple of Mithal, translated from Elven. Just to be clear, this is not translated by the Well of Sorrows. This is translated by someone or some people who know Elven. This is the tale that talks about Andrewal going into the Void to hunt the Forgotten Ones, described as Twisted Things. Well, as she did this, she would suffer madness that lasted longer and longer each time she returned from the Void. The entry claims she made armor from the Void, and everyone all but forgot her true face. She made weapons of darkness, and plague ate her lands. She howled things meant to be forgotten, and the other gods got a little nervous. So Mithal crafted a rumor of a great beast, hoping Andrewal would take it as a challenge and hunt it. It worked, and Mithal ambushed her as a great serpent, possibly a dragon, but that's not explicitly said. They fought hard, but Mithal won, sapped Andrewal's strength, and stole her knowledge of how to enter the void. After this, Andrewal could no longer make her way back, and peace returned. I mentioned this a long time ago, but we don't know how Mithal actually stole this knowledge. I mean, I guess memories can be partitioned, as we see in the Nightmares domain, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, Andrewal went into the void and brought back the Blight and or Red Lyrium, and that kind of screwed everybody else. I've also mentioned this before, but I theorize some of the other gods thought they could control it, but ultimately failed and suffered the same fate as Andrewal. Specifically as it relates to her, I think this illustrates that she was rather prideful and arrogant. I do like the idea that it was her mother who ended up fighting her. Like maybe there's some kind of long rivalry there in addition to the rest of the Evanuris. It would be great if they take that further in the future. Let's put that on hold for a minute and talk about another tale. This one seems more of a legend and is more about Fenharel than Andrewal, but I think it's important for a few reasons. The greatest of which being that it was told by Velasan, an ancient elf and agent of Solas. Essentially, Fenharel had been hunting without Andrewal's permission, so she captured him, tied him to a tree, and declared he would have to serve her in bed for a year and a day, which I have learned is a common length of time concerning witches. It comes up a few times in Dragon Age lore, most times having to do with a witch, or at least magic. Anyway, while Andrewal was explaining this, the Forgotten One called Anaris found them and claimed he should get to take custody of Fenharel for crimes against the Forgotten Ones. This does seem odd considering the Dalish legends of both the Creators and the Forgotten Ones both believing Fenharel to be an ally. Well, Andrewal and Anaris duel, but Fenharel tricks them into badly wounding each other. Then he chewed through the ropes and escaped. This tale once again showcases Andrewal's arrogance but it also gives us some more evidence of the Forgotten One's existence, considering this was told by Velasan. It also shows that Anaris and Andrewal spoke before combat, implying they weren't constantly at war with each other. Otherwise, they would have simply attacked each other. Again, this does seem like just a legend, but I'm guessing it was at least inspired by true events and or relationships. A few people have wondered if when he says Fenharel was hunting the Hala, if that actually means he was hunting Gilanon. I'm not sure he was doing either. I mean, while Solus was working against the Evanuris, he wasn't always outright attacking them, if he ever did besides the Veil. But it is a possibility. Gilanon was supposedly Andrewul's lover. I touched on that last time, but let's go into some more detail. In Gilanon's Codex entry, it says she was Andrewul's chosen. It talks about how she was a devoted worshipper of Andrewal before rising to godhood herself. It also claims Andrewal turned Gilanon into the first Hala, but most other legends credit Gilanon with their creation. By the way, this was written by the Dalish. While this talks about Andrewal seeing the grace and beauty of Gilanon, some have theorized Andrewal saw Gilanon's power and was really trying to manipulate her when she rose her to godhood. Gelanon probably had some kind of relationship with Durthamon as well, but I'll get to him in another video. Some actually theorize Gelanon had some relationship with Fenharel. When that tale from before talks about Fenharel hunting the Hala and Andrewal stopping him, they think Andrewal was either jealous of whatever relationship they had, or was worried Fenharel would sway Gelanon from her grasp. 
Some suggest Gilanon and Fenharel may have been lovers for a time. Others suggest she may have been his sister. Not a lot of evidence for any of those, but they are certainly interesting possibilities. Also, I'd be shirking my duty if I didn't at least mention this riddle from Trespasser. It goes, One sees the hunter, one flees from it, one hunts it in turn, one outwits them all. To solve the puzzle, you have to activate Balefire things in the right order as they correspond to different animals. It goes Owl, Hala, Dragon, Wolf, making the solution The Owl sees the hunter, the Hala flees from it, the Dragon hunts it in turn, and the Wolf outwits them all. If we consider the hunter to be Anduul, keeping in mind this is a riddle, and we attribute each animal to their corresponding god, it means Falandin sees Anduul as Gilanon flees from her. The dragon is most likely Mithal, so she hunts Anduul, and Fenharel outwits them all. It is interesting that Gilanon seems to be fleeing from Anduul considering their alleged relationship. However, because Mithal hunts Anduul, this could be referring to the time when Anduul was going mad because of the void. So Gilanon would be fleeing because Anduul's gone nuts, and Mithal steps in and stops her. Meanwhile, Falandin is watching, and Solus proceeds to outwit them all. Why is Falandin watching? Well, he's of course going to get his own episode, but I'd say he's the most likely candidate for being the second god to make use of the Void's power, believing he could control it where Anduul failed. Of course, that's just a theory, but it does seem likely. The gods used the power of the Blight, the only way to stop it from spreading was to create the Veil and trap them and the Blight beyond it in the Black City. Speaking of which, while I love the theory, I think we've gotten to the point where I'm kind of hoping the Black City is not Arlathan, because they're going to present that as a plot twist that a lot of us already see coming. Maybe it'll be a thing like Bucky's reveal in The Winter Soldier, where we all knew who he was, but we felt emotion because of what it meant to Steve. So if they present it like that, maybe it could work. But they always have to keep in mind that the player knows more than the player character. But getting back to Anduul, there are some more tales I want to mention. In the quest Scattered Glyphs, which precedes the Lost Temple of Durthamon, we track down various Veilfire glyphs. Because they were in the Dales, I thought maybe they were placed by the Dalish before the Second Exalted March. However, I did find this, which seems to confirm they date back to Elven Nam. What I want to talk about right now is one here that shows an image of a hawk and a hare, both of Andrew's chosen animals, chasing the sun, which would be considered to be Elgernon, suggesting that Andrew was chasing Elgernon at some point. Not a lot to say on that, but I thought it warranted mention. Andrew hunting the chief deity of the Evanur seems foolish even for her. To take this a little further, based on notes found in the temple, it does seem like this place was built in the time of Elvenon, and perhaps the shield, Durthamon's wisdom, is what kept it standing. With that and the fact that these runes date back to Elvenon, it means the symbolism of these runes are absolutely important as far as our research goes. The last tale about Andrewal I want to talk about is this. We find this codex entry revealed by the Well of Sorrows that talks about Andrewal crafting some kind of glorious weapon that kind of sounds like a javelin more than a spear. The two are very similar. Well, it says she took the radiance of the stars and fashioned them into a shaft of gold, and her worshippers prayed they would be saved from the time her weapon was thrown, to be spared from the time they became her sacrifice. Solus also claims in the Temple of Mithal Andrewal could be considered the goddess of sacrifice. Interestingly, there is a unique bow we can receive from completing a war table operation for either aiding or annexing Kirkwall, specifically with Josephine. This bow says something very similar to that entry from the Temple of Mithal. Here, instead of stars, she took the essence of a gathering storm and strung the bow with the screams of the south wind. Which does bring to mind the dagger of the four winds, but there's next to no information on that. The description also goes on to say, Andrewal, blood and force, your people pray to you. Grant that your eye may not fall upon us. Spare us the moment we become your prey. That is so similar to the one from the Temple of Mithal, I have to wonder if this is the kind of thing the Dalish mistranslated, or... I mean, I don't know. But I think that's where I'll wrap this up. I did not expect this to get so long, but here we are. 
To recap, Andrewal seems like one of the more arrogant and prideful gods from the Elven Pantheon, and I think that's saying a lot. She is believed to be the first of the gods to utilize the Blight. She was kind of an asshole. She had some kind of relationship with Gilanon, but I don't think that ended well. She seems to be like the rebellious child of the Evanurus. It is entirely possible she literally is Mithal's daughter, whether adopted or by blood doesn't really matter. She has been involved in a lot of tales, maybe more so than any of the other Evanurus. Finally, there is one last thing I want to mention concerning Sarah. There are a bunch of theories about Sarah relating to Andrewal. I did see one commenter bring up this interesting idea that I didn't see anywhere else. It's possible Sarah is a descendant of one of the gods, perhaps even Andrewal. I still prefer the idea that she's special because of that small painted box, but those ideas aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. I just wanted to bring that up while I had the chance. So that's it for now guys, thank you all so much for watching, don't forget to comment and like, and remember, Tala Nadas. Thank you.